Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, welcome to Super Agents Live. Thanks for tuning in. Look, a couple things here. First, let me tell you about today's episode. Now, today's episode kind of kicks off like an avalanche of episodes that I have with people that do radio. Now, I'm a big, I realized this like six months ago. I've talked with everybody, geographic farmers. I've talked with people who work their sphere. I've talked with people who knock on 100 doors a day. I've talked with people who spend $10,000 a month on Google pay-per-click. All that stuff is fine. Now, and that works. Not everybody is suited to all that, right? Not everybody has 10 grand to spend on Google. Not everybody has the fortitude, the desire to knock on 100 doors a day. Not everybody has a sphere big enough to to build a big business. And uh, so what I, what I clicked on about six months ago, I realized if there is a silver bullet in real estate, it's radio. Now, for those of you who think that radio is dead, radio is dead. Hey, Toby, what are you talking about? Everything's moving online. Everything's going digital. It needs to be mobile, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure. Right. You can make the argument. But overall, Every day, 244 million people tune into radio. I've talked to too many agents doing radio that are 100% killing it. It is, it is crazy. And I'll tell you, to be totally honest with you, today's guest is a really smart guy. <clears throat> but, um, you know, I've, had, I've done over 100 interviews. And, I, and I've found out that the people who, who things come easy to, right? If you get leads, you get deals, and business just comes easy to you, you know what happens? You get, you get kind of lazy, right? You sit there and your phone rings. And you, that hustle, right? That hustle muscle, that gene that, that a lot of the, the other people have, those people don't have it. I, and I hear it, man. I hear it on these interviews, right? They're sitting there and I said, hey, what works? What are you doing? And they're like, oh, blah, 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 blah. I just get deals. I'm like, oh my God, radio. Anyhow, so I have a, I have, I don't know, I need to check. I might have another 10 or 12 interviews all about radio. Now I'm releasing today's episode because this guy, his name is Mark. He's a Mark Gelman, cool guy, very smart guy. Now I, I, I'm going to give you just a little taste here. This guy... Seven years in the business. You know what he's going to do this year? $90 million. Okay. Uh, and uh, he's a smart guy, yes, but, he, but he's, he's, he's using the right marketing, which, again, is radio. So I'm a big proponent. I want to help people crack this nut. So stay tuned. Listen up. Now, a little housekeeping here. <clears throat> If you want to talk about radio, you can give me a call. That's fine. Uh, coaching spot. I might have one. I might not. I'm not sure. I, I found a guy. He's into it. Um, but at the end of the day, you know what? Look, I, I don't think I've ever said this. You know, I charge 500 bucks a month and you get to spend or I get to spend with you. I, I spend an hour with you every week fine-tuning your business, helping you break out of whatever, right? Get to it. Build it. So, uh, so at the end of the day, like I, we spent an hour together. We figured out if we were a right fit. If we are, I send you a PayPal invoice. I say, look, give me five hundred bucks, and let's let's you know, I, I'm happy to do it for free. The only reason I even charge people at all, I want to make sure they're serious, right? I I can't just I can't want your business to grow more than you do. And that's what I tell you. Like, I'm like, I can help you. I can, we can develop a plan. But at the end of the day, dude, I can't do it for you. And, and, and for me, I don't want to spend my time working with people who, who sort of have the desire, but not. I want you to have that burning desire to build your ideal life, that burning desire to go out and, and, and do it. Anyhow, that's what I have. That's why this show exists. And I've been doing it for too long. Uh, not too long. I mean, I love doing it. I just, I haven't monetized it yet, right? I haven't, like, I talk about building a business, but you know what? 
am I a hypocrite because I haven't turned this into a business now? I make money. Yeah, I mean, I have like I do coaching. That's but that doesn't make me any money. I have sponsorship. You know, I charge them three hundred bucks an episode. I get one hundred and fifty bucks a minute to talk about your thing. That's great, but I'm not making money. Real money to me, real money to me is when you, you, thirty grand a month is is like okay, fifty grand a month. You're doing. You're doing better than the rest, but you know you're not killing it. You know, really, what I I want a hundred grand a month, I a million dollars net, not gross, net a year. That's when you have. That's when you really are building your life. That's when you're really building down the road time freedom. So for me, that's what I'm shooting for, and I hope for you that's what you're shooting for. If that's what you want, and I and you know what I know not everybody wants that. Some people say, hey, you know what, I just I want to work twenty hours a week. And I want to be a great mom. I want to be a great dad. And you know what? Good for you. And, I, and I'm, I'm stoked for you. I'm down with that cause. Uh, uh, I'm a little bit off topic. So last thing, there's a hashtag for this show. It is unpack that idea. Tweet it out. Get on Twitter. Use that hashtag. I'll follow you and you'll get a new, join our tribe. One last thing. Summertime schedule. So we're going to go down for a variety of reasons. Reason number one, we're, we're, we are going to air just Tuesdays and Fridays. And the next Tuesday we might miss. I'm going on my annual road trip with my kids. I'm hitting the road. We're hitting San Diego, doing a long drive to Sacramento. We are j- jamming up to Fort Bragg on the coast, like giant, you know, we're doing some salmon fishing, right? Salmon's running. Uh, and then we're going to get into the Redwoods. And then from there, I don't know. We might we might go north and go into Oregon or we might head uh, east and get up into like Tahoe. I'm not sure. So that's what we're doing. So we may miss. Uh, we, we'll, uh, we will not air a show on Monday, uh, even though or Tuesday. And that's a new schedule. Tuesday, Friday. It's a new schedule until we get into the the fall or whatever all you guys are busy you're busy doing deals you know and I, and, and I know that you like the show I don't want to take time out of your day in terms of doing marketing or prospecting or whatever so that's what's up let's get to Mark's episode it is an awesome one today on the show you're going to meet a guy that has done some incredible stuff this guy seven years in the business this year he's going to do 300 homes and almost $90 million in volume. I'm thrilled to welcome Mark Gelman. Hey, Mark, thanks for taking the time out today. Oh, thanks for having me. I love it. So listen, um, you know, I gave the audience a brief overview of some of the highlights, but, you know, take a minute, tell us about yourself and, and, and how you're doing these incredible numbers. Sure. So I, uh, first of all, most important thing is we treat it like a business. I mean, this is not a hobby or other. So the fact is my, uh, I am a CPA. I have an accounting background. I, uh, worked in accounting and then I, uh, built an internet business. I sold it. I was a real estate investor at the time. I realized a void and a weakness in the marketplace for great real estate agents got into this by accident. And obviously six and a half years later, uh, you know, we're, we're on our way to the 300 homes and uh, the $90 million. We have an incredible culture, and that's really uh, the focus of our uh, organization. We have great people. We have uh, core values that our team works and lives by. Okay. <laughs> look, man, you glossed over. Okay. So you're a CPA. It's a mouthful. <laughs> it's a, yeah. So, but look, so your background is a CPA, right? So you're a numbers nerd. And then you, how did you... How did you go from being a CPA to starting a, a successful internet company and then selling it? How did, what, tell me about that. Really sure. Quick. So my specialization in, in, in uh, as a CPA was I was focused on uh, on um, really um, some of my clients were made department stores, were shop coast stores. Uh, Penn Daniels, uh, really retail was my focus. So what I did was I took what I had learned in that, built a retail business and ultimately sold it. Realized that the timing was right before in the shoe business, before the Zappos and the shoe buy and others. I knew I couldn't compete in that marketplace. So I sold it at the right time. But what we've done is we obviously look at ourselves. We're, we're, we're in retail today. We just happen to be selling homes and we happen to be selling ourselves to you know buyers and sellers so we're truly in retails and i love retail interesting <clears throat> interesting yeah and this is a retail business and the product just happens to be houses um <clears throat> now now i mean it seems like mark that um 
you know, you have this knack of seeing trends before, you know, you, you have this knack of seeing opportunity, right? So you saw an opportunity in retail, you jumped on it, you made it work, you sold at the right time before, you know, Zappos came in. Um, and then you said earlier, you said that you saw an opportunity or a void in the marketplace, right? So what, uh, in real estate, tell, tell me a little bit about what you mean. Sure, absolutely. I, 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 when, I, when I look at the, for example, we're number one in, in St. Louis out of about 9,000 agents. So when I looked at the old list, the St. Louis Business Journal produces a list every year. And when I looked at the list, what I saw was a bunch of individuals that were, were, were living on what they had done over the past years. You know, the average, uh, the average agent had been in the business over 20 years. 25 years. And what I saw was that there's no way that these individuals are aggressive, progressive. They're going to understand how to work in the new world of re, uh, uh, of real estate. And so in that regard, I, I saw a void. The other thing is I also, as a real estate investor, I was always dealing with different agents and I just couldn't believe the mentality of the agents that were out there, um, not treating it like a business, but really living deal to deal. And so, you know, I, I, I realized that there was a void to actually treat this like a business, grow this business. I mean, in, 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 in three years, we'll end up doing probably in, in uh, 2018, we should do probably around 250 to 300 million. And so, you know, I, I, day one, when I didn't know a thing about real estate, I actually, you know, committed to do a hundred million dollars. And uh, that was my focus. And that's always been my focus. So now we're on to bigger and better things. So, so look, um, first of all, you know, that, that's my sentiment too, right? Uh, before we got on the call, before we started recording, you know, that's my background. I'm a real estate investor and I saw, that's why I built a show, man. I dealt with so many people and they were just, you know, people get into real estate for, you know, financial freedom or time freedom. And most of the time they abuse the time freedom and never, ever even reach, you know, will get financial independence. Yeah, absolutely. The thing I say, I love to say the best thing about our business is they're independent contractors. The worst thing is they're independent contractors. Right. Totally. There's a lot of people that show up to work every day, but don't actually work. They don't know they're out of business. Right. They're out of business. That's funny. Um, so, so, but look, so most people, uh, even if they're you know, people have a problem with thinking big, right? You don't have that problem. You, you, you know, day one, before you knew anything, you said, I'm going to go do a hundred million dollars. Now that is something innate to you. Or, 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 or let me ask that. Is that kind of big thinking innate or is that something you had to cultivate along the way? No, absolutely. It's innate. And, and, I'm, and I'm, not, I'm suggesting that not everybody has that. I'm not intimidated by big numbers. And that's the thing. Actually, I think the highest volume anybody had done in St. Louis history was about 68 to $70 million. So we actually, people laughed along the way when we said this, but the fact is when you have a goal and you shoot for that goal and you know, if you have a, if you have a dream goal, a stretch goal and a goal, you're always, and if you shoot for the dream goal, you're always going to hit your goal. And in many cases, you're going to hit your stretch goal. So the fact is, we've been methodical. We've done this in a, in a really a, a strong method, and we hire the right people. The one thing I also want to preface, though, which a lot of people I'm hoping that you've interviewed that have done high volume is we're actually as fiscal responsible as we are focused on our revenue. So the fact is, if you look at our bottom line, our bottom line is incredible because again, we run it like a business. I'm not going to run a, I could easily run a hundred, $200 million company and lose money. Yeah. That's not my objective. So our focus is our productivity and the bottom line, which I think too many people miss the bottom line, which is all that matters, quite frankly. Yep. Oh, I, I 100% agree with that. You know, look, most people don't even, th they, they don't know what that is, right? Top line, bottom line. They, they literally are saying, they, they sell a house. This is how much money they got. They throw out one account. They don't have a marketing budget. You know, they don't, it, 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 anyhow. I mean, again, this points back to tr treating this like a real business, which it is. I mean, you're an entrepreneur in real estate. I'm sorry, in retail, just happening, you know, with your product being houses. So look, absolutely. We're also in the, we like to say we're in retail and we're in the lead generation business. There you go. Now I want to talk about that for a second because here's what most people will do, right? They go out, they get their, they get their license. Um, they, they start telling their, you know, either one, they start mark, working through their own database, um, and they think they're winning, which, you know, I mean, look, that's a start. And then two, if they're really, really, um, 
uh, you know, fired up, they'll go and start knocking on some doors. How, what did you do? I mean, how did you, you know, you're in the lead generation business. How, how, what do you do, Mark? Sure. I love this. First of all, the most important thing is we're doing what we did six years ago. We do that today because we're not going to sit on our laurels. So what we do is we do those same things. We pick up the call. My only focus is on dollar productive behavior. I have great, great client care, admin specialists, closing coordinators that do our non-dollar productive behavior that's critical to the success of our business. So all of all, my only focus is finding individual buyers and sellers that want to work with our team, sellers that have motivation, that have equity, that are good people. So again, our objective is how do we find those? So we're still aggressively calling expireds. We're aggressively calling, you know, canceled listings. We're door knocking. We hold open houses. Uh, again, we're trying to find people that want our services and people that we want to work with. So again, we, we don't do anything different than we did six years ago, except we're just doing it in a bigger quantity. The biggest problem that real estate agents have is they don't do anything to the highest level. They may hold one open house. They may call three expired. The fact is you have to hold 10 open houses if you're gonna be an open house specialist in a week. You're gonna to have to call 100 expired. You're gonna to have to door knock on 100 for it. You know, a lot of people just do one, two, three, 10. And this is a numbers game. There's no doubt about it. This is a numbers game. I 100% I, I agree. You know, it's so funny. I have a, I do a little coaching. I had one client that uh, would make 20 calls and he would get bummed out. He's like, man, I can't, I can't find a deal. And I'm like, how many calls you make? He's like, I made 20. I'm like, <laughs> you need to make 90. Um, right. Well, we understand and I teach my team daily. 80% of conversions happen on the fifth touch after. So if you're calling people one time, two times, three, you're missing the 80% that are after the fifth conversion. And we're that team that calls them 10 times. Interesting. Uh, and how do you get them? So, so you're, you're calling expired, you're doing some door knocking, uh, you're, you're doing open houses. Now, are you doing these, uh, these mega open houses that people are, are kind of migrating to lately? Well, first of all, our focus is, is solely on areas that we want to sell. And so we leverage off of those areas. So when we do an open house, first of all, you know, branding top of mind awareness is critical. So when we're doing open houses, we're not putting out one sign, two signs, we're putting out 10, 15, so that our name's a billboard everywhere. So everything we do is to the fullest extent. So are we doing the, the mega, um, you know, parties and those type of things? Not necessarily, but we're getting our name out and then it becomes top of mind awareness. Everything we do, everything we do is branded. So all our signage, all of our postcards, I mean, everything's very consistently branded. Although I'm with Caldwell Banker, um, that's really the sub brand on all of our signage right. and other. Yeah, that's and that's how it always should be. Um, um, so look, that's interesting. Um, that you, you know, look, you know, you are you, you have an open house, you put up ten to fifteen signs, right? So you are getting that message across that that you own this area, right? You own this neighborhood. Now, I want to ask you a question. This this came up on the show recently. You know, when you're calling expires, right, why do uh, properties expire, right? For the most part, people are unrealistic about the price. Now, what this one guy said, I want to get your opinion, Mark. He said, you know, if you're going to call expires, if you if there's a neighborhood that you want to dominate, even if that the person is unrealistic about price, you should still list that house because you get to put your sign in the yard. What, what, what do you think of that? Sure. I mean, I've heard that philosophy before. Ours is a little different philosophy. We're in the business to sell homes. I'm not in the business to list homes. I don't need for sale signs in yards. I need sold signs in yards. So yeah, is there some leverage off of it? Sure. The fact though is in most cases, I'd rather be the next agent after that guy because that guy's going to have a sign in the yard and he's never going to sell it. I'll put my, I'll put the sign in the yard and I'm actually going to sell that house. So I like to in many cases be the second or third agent versus that first that needs to put the sign in the yard. I don't need that. God, interesting, man. I mean, you are just, you're just super deliberate about, about what you're going to do. Now, now, if we go back seven years ago, so if I did my math right, you know, was that like 09? Uh, it was, so I, no, I started September of 2007. So I did 2000 September, so in two months will be my seventh year. Okay. So September 2007, 
you know, at that time frame, right, we were we were just at the at the beginning of the whole real estate bust. Right. And then September, right. Twelve months after you started September 08, <coughs> the world melted when Lehman went down. Um, how did you weather that? Oh, it, it wasn't even a challenge. There's still people that need to buy and sell real estate. All My only objective was to find people that wanted to buy and sell real estate. I don't really care about the market. The market's inconsequential to what we do. What's consequential is just finding people that want to buy and sell real estate. Oh, that's interesting, man. Um, the market is inconsequential. Um See, look, there's a lot of people, I don't, how do you, I mean, I, I want to understand that because that's a really interesting viewpoint uh, that, that uh, nobody's ever said that before on the show. You know, a lot of people didn't survive that, that downturn. Um, uh, can you, maybe, un can you unpack that notion a little bit more? Sure. The market is they psychologically weren't prepared to do what it takes to work hard. They put a sign in the yard and they sold a home. The fact is, I actually, in this market right now, we're seeing many people that really don't know how to sell homes, but they're, you know, getting the right listing and they're actually selling it. So quite frankly, for us, I actually like the 2009 market better than I do today. Because in 2009, I was able to be a hero to many people. Mm. We actually took over an expired listing and we did things different and we sold it. The fact is there's less expireds today. There's more for sale by owners and other options. So the fact is, I actually loved that market back then. Because because you could serve people, you could be the hero. Is that is that why? Absolutely, God. and and I will tell you, I was new. Yeah, I was new in the business. So the fact is, I didn't have credibility with Sphere and other, and that's how I gained credibility. I actually listed a couple as a second agent on some of my Sphere and other, and then I saw how hard I worked. So the fact is, there are a lot of agents went out of business because they just weren't prepared to really tackle the new market. Which, by the way, that was a great market. And, and so I actually loved that market. Amazing. Amazing. You're like the only, you're probably the only guy in the world that loved that market. Um, <clears throat> now, so, so you're definitely like this go big or go home guy, right? You, you, you started with a vision of a hundred million, 2018, you want to do 300 million. I mean, you're going to be, right. so you're number one in St. Louis. You're going to be number one in the nation. Well, how much is uh? there's a guy named Ben Caballero that every year this guy's like at the top of the list. Uh, do you know who yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of, I mean, my objective is really, uh, you know, to make sure that we focus our efforts on serving buyers and sellers, growing, and by the way, if we don't grow because we're going to grow in the wrong way, I'm going to hire 40 agents, I'm going to do this and that, that's not how we want to grow. Per agent productivity is our focus on our team. We have a very small team, and we're competing in St. Louis, there's a team that has 30 buyer specialists and will do double their business. We have five buyer specialists, so the fact is, I'm looking at quality over quantity. Got it, man, and so, like, so in terms of uh, I'm looking at your site right now, Mark. Um, in terms of your marketing, do you do anything like, are you on the radio? Do you like, are you doing anything different than what everybody else is doing? Or are you just doing it better? <laughs> Sure. I mean, my, th my thing is we are just doing it better. The fact is, uh, if you look at the pillars of our business, we don't rely on any one, one component of our business, but we have 15 different sources of revenue, which is critical. Uh, although our, our SOI, SOI referral, that area is, is a nice percentage of our business, 35% or more. <laughs> but the fact is we do radio, we do internet lead generation, we do for sale by owners, we do open houses, we do, um, you know, internet, um, you know, non, for example, we do, uh, we, we do some of the lead generation, but then we just do generic, uh, internet, uh, lead generation where they hit our website and other, we do some home valuation. Again, all I'm trying to find is people that potentially want our services and then we convert them. Got it. Okay. So you, that's interesting, man. So you have 15 different, uh, you know, th this is a good, good topic that to talk about. Um, so you have 15, one, five different lead generation channels is, uh, tell me if I'm I just, absolutely okay. Correct. So radio, home valuation, open houses. Now, now you mentioned internet, uh, leads a few times. What, uh, you have the home valuation, right? So, and then that people are having success with that. What other, sure. 
Well, when you're looking at overall, and then there's numerous websites, right? There's Commissions, Inc., there's Boomtown, there's Tiger Leads, all these uh, different uh, variations that are actually focused on finding buyers in, in you know, making buyers sign up to get access to, you know, the different, uh, different various homes and other. However, those conversions are just far, far less than any other, you know, method that we use. Because again, a lot of them are shot in the dark, a lot sign up with, you know, fake information. Yeah. However, we do focus our efforts on follow up, follow up, follow up. And, you know, many times we're texting, we're emailing, we're calling. So again, when we talk about internet, there's multiple different sources of, of our internet business, which one would be the home valuation. One would be, you know, a, a Tiger Lead Boomtown type of system. And then we're, we're branding our website more and more. We're using Facebook where, you know, we're boosting certain posts and other. Mm. And, and it, again, we're just, our focus is on viralness to where that we, you know, come up in multiple sources and other. We're not doing a significant amount of pay-per-click. It's just not where I want to focus our efforts. Pay-per-click can pay off. However, yeah. it's not a cheap business to be in. No, it's not. Uh, you know, it's uh, to, to really to do pay-per-click good. I mean, it, it's literally six, six or eight grand a month. And for you, um, look, so so you t you're talking about Tiger Leads and Boomtown. I've had Allison Greer on the show from Boomtown and I've had Howard Tager of, of Tiger Leads. Um, here here's the model that that I see working really well. And um, it is uh, it's Boomtown for Buyers Leads. And, and, and again, you have to have a team to do this, right? Boomtown for buyers leads and then radio for listing leads. Sure. Now, I, I will tell you, in my opinion, I think that, that this whole Boomtown Tiger Commission Inc., et cetera, I think it's actually becoming a dinosaur. And the reason it's becoming a dinosaur is, is really the agent's mentality of forced registration, which, by the way, works. The fact is, I think that that's becoming a dinosaur and we're forcing people to go to places like Zillow and other where they can search anonymously, they can search for free. So actually, to our detriment, I think that's what's occurring. Uh, with the Boomtown Tiger Lead. What I think the best reason to use a Boomtown Tiger Lead is actually for their back end, the back end organization. That's actually how we use it. We don't actually do the pay per click to force buyers. We actually use it in conjunction with our, you know, sign calls and other where we were able to um, acquire a buyer or a seller. We put them in that system and we're able to organize, you know, how many times we call them, how many times we email them. So we actually use it in that form versus the forced registration and which i don't like interesting hey mark you there's you're a very smart guy i, I mean i could you know anybody who's listening to this can tell you're a smart guy how in the world is does somebody like you with you know you have this background in retail and as a cpa how i mean you you sound like you're a technical guy i mean it takes it takes effort to understand radio it takes effort to understand you know to get this viewpoint that you have is this again is this because you're hiring the right people or is this just again, is it you? Are you just, do you just work really hard? How do you know this stuff? You know what? I surround myself with number one, I, I, I attend a lot of masterminds. I network with a lot of different agents across the United States. I mean, look, when you surround yourself with the best people, I'm sure you've played golf or tennis or whatever sport is. And when you play against better people, you actually play better. And that's just how it is. I mean, you can be the, the thing I don't allow ourselves to do is, is um, get too big of a head because we dominate St. Louis. However, nationally, there's people that are doing significantly more business. So my my focus is to stay grounded in regards to what other colleagues are doing across the United States, which, you know, some of my colleagues I've visited, have, you know, are doing one hundred and fifty two hundred million dollars. So the fact is, I just surround myself with the right people. And uh, and that's really and I do my research. I don't spend money. You know, there's a lot of every day we get some marketing propaganda. You know, we'll get you this many buyers. We'll get you this many sellers. We'll send out these postcards for you and et cetera. We just don't do that. I don't, I, again, it's hard to be fiscally responsible if you're getting caught up in all these different things. Well, look, I, I totally agree with you that, you know, you have to surround yourself with the right people. The, the going back to my question of how do you know this stuff is, is most people have sort of this backwards view, right? They have this backward view. What's working today is, you know, they say what's working today is, is the thing that was working yesterday. Now, what I'm sensing from you, you know, when you, when you look at a Tiger Leads or Boomtown and, you, and you, you're predicting, you're saying, hey, those things are sort of going away because, you know, we have this forced registration. We've messed with the consumer's 
um, um, the way they do stuff. Uh, 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 talk to me about sort of your uh, your vision, because and look, before you do, again, I think it was this forward looking vision of yours that allowed you to uh, jump on that re- retail opportunity, allowed you to sell that uh, that business that you built at the right time. And then again, uh, allowed you to get a viewpoint into how you could kill it in real estate. How do you have this forward looking viewpoint? Pay attention, pay attention to what's happened, pay attention to when you see what Expedia is done. I mean, there's still real estate, I mean, there's still travel agents that are doing fantastic today. They're fewer, they're far between. You have to add value. So I realized early on we had to differentiate ourselves, number one, from all the other agents. And then second of all, we have to pay attention to what's going on down the road. Because quite frankly, I think that, uh, you know, there's going to be more people and I, uh, you know, selling their own homes. I think there's going to be more people, you know, representing themselves to save commission and all the, I mean, and I get that, that it's always been, I mean, I'm just wide open. I'm not one to say, Hey, this will never happen. I always keep my eyes open and I have to focus my efforts on how I can keep this team moving forward, generating additional revenue, et cetera. So I think that the, the old school mentality of I'm always going to be in business. I'm always going to be, you know, able to help people. I mean, I think that's an old school mentality. So our focus is, I just want to keep going. The, the, I don't want to be a one hit, two hit, three hit wonder. I mean, I want to grow something very special. Got it. Um, that's it. Well, and look, you're doing it. Um, and, and, and right. So, so it, you know, if, if I look at, uh, you know, I've had people on the show. I mean, you look, 90 million is a fantastic number. But I've had people on the show that will do 90 million and they don't have a team. It's just them. But it's because they're selling $40 million Beverly Hills homes. Sure. You're number one in St. Louis, and you're going to do about $90 million. How in the world, what's it going to take for you to, to take over? How are you going to get to three hundred? What's it going to be? Sure. I mean, again, it's like any business, it's hiring great people. I mean, they, you know, IBM at one point, Dell, they were selling one computer and then they sold thousands and then millions. But it's because they have great people. And that's really the backbone of the organization is, I mean, I have the leads. I, I mean, we, if today, if every lead was touched that we generate, we would do 300 million. We don't have the infrastructure. We would blow up. Our, our admin would blow up and our team would blow up. So the fact is, it's very methodical. We have to hire the right people. We really don't have to spend any more money generating new leads because when you're doing that type of volume, you intrinsically, your listings will create more buyers, Mm -hmm. your listings will create more listings, et cetera. So that's not really my focus. My focus is finding people that are going to match our culture. And that's actually the the biggest challenge that we have. Uh, And when you go back to those individuals that are selling the $40 million, you know, and that's a great thing. Don't get me wrong. Selling, you know, selling a hundred million dollar homes. I mean, that's a hundred million. Dollars. Our average price point is actually 300 and change, while the average price point in St. Louis is about 160,000. So we've made a concerted effort to serve a lot of people at certain price points and above. We just can't service everybody. We refer out a lot of business. But the fact is, we don't need more leads. We just need better people. The other thing is, if God forbid I was ever in the hospital or I missed our business for two months, our business would still go on. It always concerned me when I first started that the reason our business was is, you know, there was only two of us generating business. And if one's out, I mean, we're, we're in trouble. So I wanted to build a sustainable organization. Got it. And look, and that's the, you know, that's the difference between a business and a company, right? If if you if it takes you for the business to keep going, you have a business. When you can get to a point where you can step out, you can be gone for two months and it still runs. That's when you built a company. That's now you have something you can sell. You know, when it becomes a company. Absolutely. So, um, so I, uh, I have a couple questions about radio because uh, I've had a lot of radio people on. Uh, probably you know them all. You know Kathy Toth and um, anyhow. Yeah. Um, great they, people. Yeah, great people, and they're all from. Uh, and, and by the way, I, the, from the people that I've had on, I think you're the smartest out of all of them so far. But so, what percentage of of let me, let me back up? Kathy said that radio was thirty percent of her business. What percentage of radio? Uh, or is your business 
Sure. Right now. So, you know, again, we'll sell 300 homes this year. And I think radio will be about 13 percent. Quite frankly, I don't believe in concentration. I mean, in in any business, there's concentration of credit risk. For example, when you have only a few clients make up a great majority of your revenue, I'd never have had that mentality because if something goes away, if something changes, I never wanted to be hurt by that. So, I mean, fortunately, it's only about 13% or so. It's good. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's been a very good pillar, but it's not an end all be all. If it changed today, I'd be disappointed, but we'd move on. So, you know, that's, it's a little different than a lot of others, but we make money. Money, there's a great ROI and it's good branding, yeah. but um, it's not the end all be all for us. Got it. You know, there's one guy you probably know him. I can't think of his name right now. I'll see if I can I can go through my calendar really quickly. Uh, um, he's uh, he's in Montana, um, and uh, uh, Roy I Cle- don't know him. Roy Cleves. Does that sound familiar? I don't recognize that name, but um, I mean you have in in radio. Oh, no, no, I mean it, you have. It's a Brett Kelly. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I know, Brett. Yeah, so Brett. Actually, I just uh, Brett just in the in, in there's a Facebook thread just for rate radio and television experts. Actually, I just responded to something he had posted about you know the quality of some lead generation, and I actually you know put it down. I wouldn't mention what it is, but yeah. So we work together on all those type of things. There's some sharp, sharp lines in radio. Yeah. So, well, here's what I was to say. So so Brett came on the show, um, and he was uh, um, he was. Uh, uh, f- he said 50% of his business comes from radio. And I was like, oh, sure. my God, that is crazy. <laughs> Anyhow, okay. So <clears throat> when you culture, you're definitely a culture-first organization. You know, what? What? T- talk to me about your culture and what, what, you know, what makes it great as well as, you know, why it's difficult f- hiring for your culture. Sure. So um, first of all, um, we have a very transparent organization. We, um, if there's ever an issue, anything, we get the Allison out of the room immediately. That's just how I run my organization. I'm not, not everybody is for our team and not every, you know, individuals, you know, will be right for them. So we focus our efforts on hiring the right people. We are truly a team, meaning that our buyers agents only represent buyers. Our listing agents only represent listings. They don't over, they don't cross over and they don't get referral fees. They realize that as a team culture, if a listing agent has a buyer, they give the buyer to the buyer agent and vice versa. And then what comes around goes around. So the fact is we're not looking to you know, make money off each other. We're looking to uh, have one team, homogenous team. We, every day we recite our mission and our core values. We start every meeting. We have a huddle every single day. We, have a, we start with our mission statement and we end with our core values every single day. We hire and we, you know, unfortunately, we don't, you know, really release anybody. We released one individual this year and, um, you know, he just within three days, we identified that he wasn't the right cultural fit, even though he did a lot of business. But we don't need the revenue. We need the right people. Um, you know, we don't have turnover and um, we have great people. And so that's really what it is. We care about our people, but it's a business. I mean, it's a serious business. I hold everybody accountable. And if they're not prepared for the accountability, it's the wrong business we keep everybody in check so so that's it's so funny i was going to ask you that question i was going to pose that that situation right you have this guy that that is really talented let's say and i i I want you to talk about this guy right you had a guy that was really talented but he just wasn't the right fit what what i mean what does that look like what does that look like to you Sure. So if you look at our core values are on our website and, and, and anybody can you know identify them. But part of our core values, other than confidentiality and honesty, integrity, professionalism, you have response. You have responsiveness, reliability and attention to detail. And if you're not reliable, if you're not responsive, if you don't call back leads, if you, you know, are five minutes late for I mean, that's our, not our core values. And and unfortunately, very early on, we saw he was not responsive and he wasn't reliable and we just can't have that on our team. Now, our team did recently vote, and our one, one of our number one producers, who again had a couple challenges, uh, they voted to keep him on, and he's made some unbelievable, you know, changes. But you know, he's our number one producer. Uh, I was prepared to let him go because we just don't need that. And he'll sell about eighty homes this year on the list side. And um, again, our team voted, and we put in the team's hands, and our culture gets stronger because of that. Amazing, man. Amazing. This guy is going to sell 80 houses out of your 300 and you were willing to cut them loose. 
that that takes some, uh, immediately immediately I mean, I mean that takes that takes some that that takes some some balls man i mean that's not everybody would do that i mean you know people i don't know if it's greed or what but you are a very rare person um i think I mean, would you agree with that yeah, you know, I think I have a backbone, which I mean, I've visited a lot of other teams where, I mean, there's people that I would have released immediately. I think that everybody knows where they stand in our organization. So with that, I think that's a little different. People are scared of confrontation and other. I welcome it, quite frankly. Look, I own a significant amount of apartment buildings and other. And always early on, one of my greatest things was when I would evict somebody from my building because they knew I wasn't messing around. And um, people in our team understand that. I I mean, this is a business. This is a very serious business. Yeah, no, it totally is. Um, so transparency, uh, being being accountable. Um, look, you, you are one of these guys. Uh, well, look, let, let me go back real quick. So, out of your fifteen lead generation channels, is there one that 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 stands up as as the you know what's the all star one other than radio? Sure. Um, you know, um, expireds have been strong this year and even, and everybody complains there's not enough expireds because all the great houses are selling. We've sold, you know, about 12% of our business will be expired. And these are, um, mm-hmm. and, and we've sold them and we're, and then we leverage off of them. So when we get an expired, we say after another agent tried to sell the home in this subdivision, we sold it, you know, we're aggressive. So we leverage off of it. I mean, our SOI has been very, um, favorable. Um, our SOI, SOI referral past clients, that little section is about 35% of our business. What I'm looking forward to is when we're in this business, you know, 10, 15 years where we have a lot of past clients, we're just starting to get past clients, you know, sell their home right after six years or five. So now we're starting to get that business, but keep in mind just two years ago, I mean, three years ago, we only did uh, 22 million before I really learned the business. So, I mean, you know, so we really didn't have have a lot of past clients we just are getting them now so it so that's so it took you four years to get to 22 million and that took you another three to get to 90 right and then uh, to get to 300 will probably be three it's just um it, you know like anything it's just um ramping up you know creating the right culture, finding the right people, being prepared to let go of your business and let go of financial. I mean, look, it's, I make a heck of a lot more money when I represent every buyer and every listing, but you just can't do that. And then you have to learn that. And then you hire the right people and then you have the right systems in place. And that's why, and then it's easier. Look, the first hundred sales is a heck of a lot easier than the next 200, you know, the hundred, I mean, we're hitting the, we just hit hundred. So, so two years ago, we only had, so last year, we sold 201 homes the year before as smaller we only sold 97 homes so you know the fact is hitting that first hundred was a barrier kind of like the four minute mile and then once we hit the hundred we blew through it last year and then this year we've already sold a hundred and i think 62 homes got it so you know it's, so it's easier psychologically you know to hit three four five six hundred so look, there's, 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 I didn't tell you before the, the call, but you know, we're in 57 countries. We stream 35,000 hours of content every month. So there's a lot of people that's going to listen to you, Mark. Now people are out there going, man, I, I, I want to model Mark. What is, in terms of what should they, you know, I don't know what, how to ask this, but if they want to model you, Mark, and they want to build something like you have built, where should they start? Sure. First of all, they have to start by understanding that what we're doing is not rocket science. Okay. We're not, we're not saving lives. We're not doctors, you know, we're just, you know, so number one, we have to put ourselves in, 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 and check ourselves that this isn't rocket science. Okay. We're not manufacturing a, you know, medical device or anything. So that's the first thing. Once you realize that truly you're in the service business and you're in the lead generation business, you happen to just sell real estate, but truly, you know, you're a retailer, you're a lead generator. So once you realize that, then you have to have the right systems in place. So, you know, if I were brand new today, the first thing I would do, and I had the fortunate financial ability to hire an assistant day one. Cause as I told you very early on, my only objective is to do dollar productive behavior, prospect lead, follow up work with, you know, qualified buyers and sellers. That's, that's really all any kind of admin stuff. I don't you know, want to do. So anybody out there, the first thing they should do is hire that assistant. And yeah, financially it's an impact, but 
you'll get that return five, 10, I don't even know how many times you'll get a return on that. And then once you do that, you put great systems in place and all you have to do is expand your systems. You find out one or two things that you're great at, whatever you're comfortable. If you're comfortable cold calling, then do that, but do it three, four, five hours a day. If you're comfortable knocking on doors, knock on a hundred, 200 doors. If you're comfortable at open houses, you know, hold five, six open houses a week. I used to hold open houses at, at, at very high profile file client houses where instead of working at the office, I worked at my client's home. I mean, and I just had for, you know, signs up all over. So again, you just have to do whatever you're going to do to the fullest extent. And again, it's not hard to do because naturally you'll generate leads by doing open houses, by calling people, by asking people. So again, I hate to minimize it, but it's just, it's not a hard thing to do. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, that's, that's amazing. Man. I mean, you make it sound, you know, when we first got on this call, you, you know, you, you were this mythical guy that, you know, seven years, you know, doing a hundred million dollars. And then when you, when you put it like that, Mark, you know, it's, it sounds like not a big deal. Just go do it. And I'll tell you like, so, so, you know, hiring a assistant or what I have a VA and uh, my out desk, I'm sure you're familiar with my out. Yes, I have a couple. Right. So I have one and, you know, I just have her uh, part time, you know, it would cost me, you know, 380 bucks a week or something. You know, but but she frees me up to do what I do best, and this is it. Um, so so they're they're gonna do open houses. They're gonna find something they're comfortable with, cold calling, whatever it is. Um, in, in terms of um, you know, putting a, a, a something else in place, right? And so this 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 uh, home valuation. I'm gonna I'm gonna try yours real quick. So this home valuation deal is uh, pretty popular lately. Um, and I think it might be getting played out, but so here's my address. It is, it is. However, what it does is it gives us a little, I mean, I can't tell you how many people will try it out and then they'll call us, you know, um, I mean, it's overplayed, but like anything, real estate agents, like anything overreact. So, you know, but again, it's just a little nugget that we have. It's nothing, uh, you know, to, uh, yeah, again, that will generate this year. I think that will generate 4%, which is nothing. I mean, it will generate, uh, you know, uh, 12, 12 sales, but still it pays for itself. And again, all I look at is ROI. Yeah, totally. Uh, you know, it's funny here. Um, um, so you will get a if you you will get an agent in a different country. Yeah. I mean, a different city. Yeah. for you That's because right. it's it's a little bit. We have it um, set up. It's not. I don't get every lead. So the thing is, I only get St. Louis leads. It's a group that we have, so it actually works quite well. So I'm able to build an audience nationally, and others are able to build an audience national. But leads only go to me and you know them. It's a little different. It's a unique property. Right. 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 Um, did is this is this something um uh matt put together no are you familiar with buddy blake out of carolina oh yeah yeah buddy's yeah buddy's been on yeah the show. it's buddy Got yeah it. buddy uh okay. buddy put it together yeah it was and great. it's proprietary for every you know city and so it works out great but but so this let me so so i put it i i on your site i put in my address i hit go right it threw up now it threw up chris heller which you know chris yeah <laughs> but, of course but the funny thing is, is it, it, this this ties back into radio. Chris does Chris Heller, the home seller. He's my guy here in San Diego. Yeah, San Diego, right? So, my, so is that is your home valuation site? Is it tied with all your radio guys? Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of us in radio, most of uh, everybody in radio has this, but every market was open. So whoever wants it, wants it. So by the way, if they do a great job, if Chris Heller's team does a great job, which I would expect them to, you'll get a call, a follow-up call. And he just wanted to, uh, you had registered or you had complete a home valuation. What I'd love to do is give you a, a more accurate, you know, once I see your house, et cetera, how would it be if I could set up an appointment with you? Because my only objective is to be in front of you then. Yeah, right. Okay. And so, right. And Chris, then that's what he does. I mean, he, he, again, he does a lot of the same lead gen as us. Yeah. And he's somebody that I've been, I've, he booked for the show and he had to cancel and I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't reached back to have him back on, but I want to get him for sure on the show. Um, look, we're going to wrap up here. I, I'm going to ask you something, Mark, that I normally, I rarely ask, but, um, but it's this. Here's the crazy question. What's something I didn't ask you that I should have asked you? I mean, you, you, you're this wealth of knowledge, and I, I, I want to make sure that I, anything I can wring out of you, I get. 
Um, you know what? I think the most, so one of our, going back to our core values, one of our core values is family life work balance. And so the question is, how do you run a, you know, 90, hundred million dollar business with, with multiple individuals that are producing and how do you all have family life work balance? Because I think that's critical. And again, if you have the right systems in place, you manage your clients. So a very simple, um, there's a, a very simple dialogue that we use and they're two different dialogues. So if I asked you, uh, you want to interview me for a listing and I say, well, what works best for you? You're going to say nights or weekends, right? And right. if I don't want to work nights or weekends, a better dialogue is great. What works best for you mornings or afternoons? Right. And so, 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 you know, I think family life work balance is one of our core values is very important. And so how do you manage that? I think you, if you have the right people in place and uh, the right systems and the right dialogues to control that, and, and if we're in control of our clients more than they're in control of us, and we're not afraid to walk away from clients that disrespect our time, that won't get pre-qualified on the buy side, that aren't realistic on the sell side. See, we're not afraid to walk away from things. And that's probably the biggest difference. A lot of people put signs like you, the gentleman you were referring to, he wants a sign in the yard. That's a weird mentality in my eyes because it costs you money. You have to take pictures. You have to put the listing up. I mean, what's the opportunity cost of having that sign, you know, having that listing up, talking to the seller, why his house isn't selling every day or every week. Right. It's just, we look at everything as an opportunity cost of our time, energy, and money. And so that probably would be one of the most important things that we're, working on to get better at is our family life work balance and still do a heck of a lot of revenue. Yeah, no, look, and so is it, is it possible? I, it's, I, I, somebody asked me this recently and I, I really didn't have an answer for him. You know, is it possible to be a successful real estate agent and have a real, you know, successful business, but only work nine to five? Absolutely. Well, a couple of things. Number one, if you have the right people in place, I think it's very hard for an individual producer. It's virtually impossible for an individual producer to, to, to do that. There's just no way, especially in today's market uh, where, you know, homes will come on the market, a great home priced right, prepared for sale. And there's going to be multiple offers or other. You can't wait till tomorrow at nine o'clock or, or eight o'clock if the first showings are at six. Right. So the fact is you have to leverage and have great people. It is impossible to do it as a uh, you know one man one, one two person team now as you get bigger absolutely because by the way it's important to me that enough that I uh, you know if I have to be somewhere first of all we schedule everything every appointment should be scheduled right this this uh, this was on my schedule at two o'clock you sent me a reminder it didn't need to because I knew that you know it was on my schedule so I schedule everything even a dinner a personal dinner I'll schedule so the key is if you schedule it really helps and then if you have great people to leverage off of uh it helps a lot too so yeah i think under the right scenario you can especially as a top producer you can have a nine to five job or less got it i love it man all right well, well here this is the one question i ask everybody the last one <clears throat> i'm an aspiring agent i have 25 bucks what book should i go buy today you know i think that uh I think that uh, millionaire real estate agent still, it, it teaches you. I know they're updating it. I think it's a great book. Uh, if you have $25 to spend and you have five people on your team, five dysfunctions of a team is, is a book I would recommend. So again, if you're starting out, you know, millionaire real estate agent to understand how to build a business, understand how to, you know, get to the different levels. But if once you have a team, five dysfunctions of a team is, is, is spectacular because again, the way we run our business is based on that book. I'm sorry, who wrote that? I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Uh, Patrick, Le uh, Patrick Leone. Got it. Um, 4.5 stars on Amazon. Yeah. Hey, look, if anybody wants to get either one of those books and you can get a free copy, just use our link, audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. Hey, Mark, man, I really appreciate you coming on the show. For everybody out there, Mark is in, uh, in St. Louis. He has a fantastic- St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, he's always looking for talent. Uh, you should go and see if you can work with him. I think it would be a fantastic thing. And, and where, where can everybody find you and, and you know, reach out and say thanks for coming on the show? 
Sure, there's a couple places. First of all, thegelmanteam.com, T-H-E-G-E-L-L-M-A-N-T-E-A-M.com. So thegelmanteam.com, my email is mark, M-A-R-K, at thegelmanteam.com, and I can be reached at 314-336-1991, I really appreciate the opportunity. If anybody wants any advice, any questions or other, I'm always available. Um, so I look forward to uh, hearing from some of your listeners and I appreciate the opportunity. If you ever need anything, don't hesitate to give me a shout. Awesome. Thanks, man. And, uh, and by the way, man, uh, I'm sure you're going to get uh, some calls and emails. So I appreciate that. Cool. Um, and look, I'll look we, forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and look, everybody, uh, if you've missed any, all the stuff will be on Mark's show notes at super Hey Mark, thanks again, bud. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Enjoy. Have a great day. See you, pal. Bye-bye now. Let's go!